heard uh, all of you have very nice uh, discussions in the breakout rooms. Uh, unfortunately, we did not hear any feedback from several groups about which topic uh, they are presenting, but we, we hope that there won't be any overlaps of the topic um, topics, right, fine. So what we want to do now is like, uh, we want all of you to select one person who can volunteer from your group. And uh, that person will have to briefly, very briefly, it doesn't have to be like, I mean, like two to three minutes, you can uh, present what, what you want about the particular visualization and the data to action framework that you prepared. And then we'll have a discussion around it. Uh, we will comment and also we can open other uh, participants to comment as well. So without wasting much time, uh, shall we start with group one? So uh, who's volunteering from group one to present? Uh, okay, uh, I'll volunteer for group yeah. one. Yeah, could you, could you please uh, share your presentation? You can share. You okay, can share. thank you. Let me just share now. Okay, okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, uh, we couldn't start on time in group one. I think uh, we had a lot of discussion uh, as to what indicator to choose from. But uh, although we didn't fully populate uh, our framework here, but I'll quickly take uh, you through it. And um, I'll just probably um, uh, talk about the related actions uh, because now uh, we couldn't complete uh, the table. So uh, let me quickly uh, say we chose um, the second and third 90 indicators here, uh, but we focused mainly on the value load coverage uh, in this particular example. So, uh, so the objective, uh, I think, uh, I wonder if you can all see our, uh, you can clearly see the, the visualization, but uh, viral load coverage is uh, the very last bar uh, on the graph here. It is the very last bar on the graph. And um, so the objective here was to, uh, we think is to measure the viral load coverage at a national level. Uh, against the target of 90% this year, target line here. So we thought that uh, this is <clears throat> the objective is to measure um, viral load coverage uh, against the 90% uh, target, but uh, this, this data is shown at the national level. And uh, our data source here, uh, uh, although we didn't go back into the data capture screen to see exactly uh, how the forms look, uh, we just believe that uh, this one uh, should be from um, the, viral, the viral load testing data that uh, <clears throat> we capture on monthly basis because you see here it is uh, on the visualization, it is uh, on the last half month. So I took an we took an assumption that uh, this is uh, reported on monthly basis. And uh, uh, here we believe that uh, if we break our data set into a uh, denominator and numerator. So we believe that uh, all people living with HIV who are eligible for viral testing, that should uh, 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 compose our, our denominator, while our numerator should be uh, those people who actually tested for, not really for HIV, so yeah, I said tested for HIV, but I uh, would like to say tested for viral load. Uh, so our denominator, uh, people who are eligible for viral load testing, and uh, our numerator should be people who uh, actually tested for, for viral load. And uh, on the related actions, I think uh, we didn't uh, uh, complete that, but uh, because of time, but uh, we believe that um, the actions uh, should be taken uh, for for uh, facilities that or for um, coverage that is way below the target. And if you look at our visualization, you can know that all um, for all these indicators, uh, or if you look specifically at viral load coverage, it is uh, at 53.5. That is way below uh, the expected 90% viral load coverage. So I think uh, the concerned parties should take action to ensure that uh, the coverage is good here. But again, um, uh, there may be a lot of reasons uh, related uh, to this, but uh, now that we didn't have time to explore that, uh, we really can't uh, provide some 
uh, informative discussion on that one. I think uh, that's all for group one. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, just keep on sharing. Uh, uh, so we will have uh, we will we will give the opportunity for other groups to come in. So any comments you have on uh, what uh, the group one has presented or the specific visualization, anything more you can add to what uh, they were presenting? Anything you can yes. tell? Uh, we can add like uh, programmatic implications in related actions uh, because uh, the achievement is below our target. So we can like uh, recommend whether is it due to some uh, like uh, the functionality of um, testing facilities or is it due to uh, access to the testing uh, labs? So we need to add like some programmatic implications, I think, in related actions. Yeah, very good. So basically, like we have to, uh, uh, right, what you can do is you can go at a detail well, about actions. Like, so if it is uh, one thing you can do is you can uh, have a cutoff value. It's just, just not that 90% trend line. But in case what to do if it is more than 100 or like you can have multiple and for each of them, you can yeah. think all possible combinations for um, uh, variations based on the numerator and the denominator as well. Thank you. The comments? Okay, can, uh, although we were presenting, uh, can I have a question? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, I just want to know uh, on the impact, on the um, indicator part, like we put a uh, viral load coverage. So I'm just uh, trying to come to a, a real life situation where we will have a cascade like this one here or a graph like this, this one, which is uh, composed of many indicators. Can we put all of them there? Uh, and on the data source, uh, put all of the narrative for the indicators that, that we find in the graph or what is the, uh, the, the practice here? That is the practice. Can we have all the, the indicators written and then uh, show the graph um, objectives? Uh, how do how do we put it? Thank you. I don't know if uh, I'm clear. Uh, it is not totally clear to me. You mean like if you have multiple data items coming from different sources, where uh, whether to mention them in data source or? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, assuming if that is the uh, question you have, yeah, definitely. Like, say, for example, if your uh, numerator comprises of multiple data items which are coming from multiple forms that mm -hmm. you mentioned. And also, another thing that you have to take into account is if you are just looking at, uh, say, for example, if you are looking at a coverage indicator, which is formulated based on uh, numerator, maybe coming from monthly period, and denominator, maybe just annual, annual population count or something like that. Uh, I, I feel even even uh, it is important for, for you to make that also as a note because like some otherwise what will happen is um, whoever who's trying to um, interpret that person will have to make an assumption right so that's what we want to uh, get rid of by having this data source or, or at uh, most probably I think data source would be the place that you can mention uh, the periodicity if it is relevant. Uh, Saurabh you want to add anything? Uh, no, no, no specific comments. Thank you. Right. Okay. So I guess we can. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much, Group One. Uh, nicely done. So uh, maybe we'll give the chance to Group Two to present. Somebody from Group Two, volunteers. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Larry. This is. Larry from group two. So yes, I will Larry. share my screen. But it's, it's uh, let me just put a disclaimer right now. It's, it's an incomplete, um, it's, it's an incomplete presentation, but. Um, no problem. We, we all know like we didn't give you enough time. So no problem. Okay. Uh, please proceed. Okay, so 
uh, we had agreed to cover the HIV art coverage rate uh, for the whole of training land. And I am sorry, but then the, visual, the, the visualization, as you can see, we tried to make the picture fit in there, but then you can barely make out what is being presented, but then I will walk you through the whole presentation. Now, the objective of the visualization is to measure performance, the, the performance of art services delivery. So we figured a uh, high coverage will be in indicative of uh, a good service linkage between testing and the actual initiation on, 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 on ART. And our data source is uh, the HIV ART program monthly data set. The numerator we're using is the number of people who are actually on ART, and the denominator is the number of people that tested HIV positive. So the related actions, we figured that if, uh, if any of those districts records uh, a rate which would be less than 60 percent uh, the administrator is to check whether there's under reporting of initiations of people on art also it would be a good idea if they were to check the causes of leakages if there are actually leakages between testing and initiation and um, well, the others, uh, as I said, it's an incomplete um, presentation. But then if it happens to be in the blue, it will be greater than or equals to 100%. And it will be always best to maintain uh, such efforts. Uh, the other, the other, the other legend sits the 60% to 75 75 to 89, 90 to 100%. It's always best to check whether there is any underreporting or if there are any opportunities for improvement. Thank you. That is group two's presentation. Right. Thank you, Larry. So, any comments from others, other groups? Any comments from facilitators, uh, Saurabh, Pramil? Yeah, so uh, while they prepare like a uh, uh, few things, uh, first thing is if it is more than 100 uh, for the actions, uh, I mean, like if it is 100%, you can maintain the efforts, but uh, if the car, I mean, like if it is more than 100, then uh, can you do something else? So, in fact, like this is why uh, it may be like if you are thinking of uh, of some some issue with data, right? If it is more than hundred percent, then I feel it it would be better if you put that uh, under a separate uh, uh, legend, like I mean more than hundred, so that you don't touch the hundred mark because hundred is okay, right? If we, I mean we are we are fine with it, but if it is hundred and one or maybe like uh, like you can even think because in in real life scenario, what happens is. Uh, there may be some occasional uh, discrepancies of uh, data where like you may get, uh, you may notice 101, 105, things like that uh, for, a, for a short span of time until your data is ready, like completed. So maybe some countries like what they do is they tend to uh, give some allowance for that. And that's why they sometimes, uh, you know, like uh, keep it, if it is more than 110 or 120%, then uh, please um, you need to, uh, check whether something is wrong. So that's one thing. Um, and also like when you are commenting about the actions, you should always uh, comment on uh, the indicator and denominator both. Right? Say for example, uh, you can check whether ART initiation, there are issues. And also you, you can also check again um, whether there is some issue with the denominator. Right? So that also is something that you can comment. Okay. The comments, okay. Uh, yeah, um, Saurabh?
Oh, Pramil or any other facilitators who's there? Uh, okay, looks like there are no, no more comments. So thank you very much, Larry and the group too, uh, for that presentation. Yeah, so please stop sharing. Group three, any volunteers? Hello, I will be presenting for group three. Hi, Chan, uh, yes. Please share your I, screen. I'll just share my screen. Okay, so here you go. Um, yeah, we so, can see. All right. Um, the indicator that we have chosen is the HIV test positive. So this is a bit straightforward. That's why our group decided to use tables to visualize this. So the table is visualizing the HIV test positive rate between two regions, the animal region and the food region for the last 12 months. So the objective, objective of visualization is first to compare the HIV test positive rate in the two districts within the last 12 months period and measure the overall HIV test performance for region to be able to monitor HIV test progress in training life. So this is where we were able to get the data. The data source is HIV test group. The indicator is HIV test positive rate. The numerator HIV test positive, denominator HIV test performed, the period is last 12 months. So regarding the related actions, we were not able to finish it, but this is what we were able to uh, this is what our group was able to identify. First one is if HIV positive, a positivity rate is greater than or equal to 50%, um, review the numerator. If there are any entry errors or outliers, uh, for the denominator, is the target population plausible or is the selected target population correct? Um, also, if the HIV test positive case is greater than or equal to HIV test performed, so we need to validate data with the source of the data. So these are the action steps we're able to identify. So right, thank you very much, uh, Chan. Um, anybody who wants to comment on uh, what was presented by group two, group three? Other groups? Yes. Yes, John. Related. Hello. Yes, please proceed. Uh, Arif, or, uh, yeah. Uh, Whoever, yes, please, please related, proceed. Yes. Related actions are here focused only data valid, validation. Uh, so here, uh, many parameters can be used. For example, <laughs> the reader here shown. 16.5 and 12.5. Is it expected rate or it is higher than expected? It's just my observation. Observation. Yes. Uh, so he was suggesting in case the test positivity, uh, positive cases is more than test performed, other than validating the with the data source, uh, there are a few other actions you have to do. So yes, true enough. That's correct. Um, Chandra, you wanted to uh, comment? Uh, no. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Anybody else? Right. So if not, I have some questions. Like, first of all, what was the reason why you selected a pivot table for this visualization as opposed to maybe a, a chart or a map? Any reason why you decided on a pivot table? I think our group decided to make it more straightforward since uh, the data is uh, few. So I think that's the reason why we're not using a data instead of charts. Right. Uh, so, okay. Yeah, that, that's fair enough. But like, are there any inherent um, uh, disadvantages of using pivot tables for visualizations or are there like major advantages? What do you think? Oh, like, I mean, I'm asking from the entire group three. Um, I, uh, my idea, I think if we present the um, visualize the event report, we can visual um, the, the, the exact uh, numerator and denominator, and we can see and we can cross check um, that number on that. And um, we didn't show all um, 
all uh, category just only a few category uh, uh, region uh, like animal region and uh, food region so it's easy to visual uh, the, the table i think yeah yeah, Chandra. So you partly answered my, my the next question I was going to ask, like why you just selected uh, test positives and test performed and not anything else. Yeah, so maybe what I understood is you wanted to give a better idea to the uh, person who was seeing about uh, the proper disag or I mean, like what constitutes this indicator. So they don't have to drill or maybe have a look at another visualization to understand how the numerators and uh, denominators are performing because you can give uh, uh, the entire summary in one, one visualization. So that's the advantage of using uh, the, a tabular visualization. But is there a disadvantage also by doing this? Uh, visualizing usually, it? Yeah, usually um, as um, I saw, um, we can show as a column chart plus um, um, a line, mean that combine, combine together. Um, but uh, the default I saw um, your exercise visualize is uh, the table so that why we didn't change any uh, your format. We just copy and interpret of that visualize. Okay. No, in case if you are just, I mean, uh, not using a, a chart or map, we just want to proceed with the table. What additional modifications would you like to do in a table to make it, uh, you know, like more visually striking? Anything? I mean, anyone, uh, any any of you can think of a better, some modification you can do to this pivot table? Hello. Yes, yes, Joe. Uh, I think another modification which can be done maybe to apply some more lenses, which can make it a bit of eye catching. Yeah, exactly. I mean, rather than eye catching, it will be like it just strikes out the message. So uh, maybe group three, uh, another thing you could have done is you can apply a legend as he suggested to the table uh, so that the background color changes, right? So if it is less, really less, you can make it red so that people, I mean, like, because you don't have to just focus on the figures uh, if you just put that. So that's the enhancement that you can do when you select a pivot table. Of course, you can take the advantages of pivot table and you can make it better by uh, doing those slight modifications. Right. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, All right. yeah. So, so it's good that you took this visualization so that I could highlight this point. Any, any further comments, uh, facilitators, participants, anyone? And one more thing, like about the actions, uh, always rather than data, I mean, I, I totally agree, you have to mention about actions related to data, you know, like you have to check whether there has been some, uh, any data entry errors or outliers. Uh, and target populations are correct. Like some public health interventions also you can mention, right? Assuming if these values, the data is correct, then you also need to mention some public health interventions that you have to do, do if HIV test positivity rate is really high, right? Because then you need to uh, uh, strengthen your preventive measures, right? And, and community awareness and things like that. So you can even categorize your actions based on like what to do for data related, or what to do as public health um, interventions, right? That's also something that you can think of. All right, thank you so much. Uh, group four. Thank you. Group four, any volunteers? Yeah, group four. Um, yes, Krishna. Presenting on behalf of. Please share your screen, yes. So let me share my screen. Right, we can see. Good. Please proceed. Yeah. Um, for group four, we looked at the indicator HIV casted by gender last 12 months. Um, and we picked the, um, the, the charts, um, the column charts to the visualization using the column charts was what we picked. And um, for the objective of the visualization is for us to monitor and uh, for monitoring HIV program effectiveness to test and um, the treat policy. So in terms of the um, number of persons tested and number of persons um, that are being treated and as well as the um, number of persons that are being retained in terms of them um, from those who are already been, who are already on the ART um, over a period of time. And then um, in, in terms of um, the gender, male, female, um, our source of data um, 
came from um, one, the HIV, those who tested positive for HIV and um, persons who are living with HIV that are being enrolled newly on the, the ART and um, those who are also being retained um, over time. I mean, over the last 12 months within um, the um, within the treatment regime, then also um, the gender, because we needed to with the data for in terms of gender, male, female, to be able to um, different um, get that um, visualization. Then the related action um, for us, and um, what we looked at is um, um, if any gender HIV. We also looking at in terms of um, if any gender um, any of the genders that um, it's test positive is higher than. So what we did within the group is that we kind of looked at and said, okay, can we agree on um, a threshold? So, okay, a threshold of 125 within the last 10, 12 months. So if um, any of the gender HIV positive is above 125, um, um, probably check for reasons why um, this is happening and then um, review the interventions that, um, um, that is ongoing in terms of treatment. Then also to monitor, we also looked at monitoring the retention of um, persons um, living with HIV around the ART. If there is a retention, if the retention, um, the number of persons who are being retained drops um, below a certain number within them within a month. Um, in any of the um, gender, we also looked at um, a situation where um, there needs to be an intervention. There needs to be sorry, not intervention. There needs to be like. Um, check within that um, why that is happening and um, see if there's anything that needs to be done in terms of um, looking at it from the public health perspective. And also if um, those who are new um, on ART um, are um, less than 50% of those who tested positive, we also felt that um, there needs to be a check on this to check for um, medication and, and adherence. If people are really adherent that if you test positive, you need to be, um, you need to be on ART so to check if people are actually adhering and all of that. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, so any comments from uh, the participants, any groups, any other groups want to comment? Anything from the facilitators? Right. Uh, I have a few comments. Uh, the first thing is like, uh, now when you're just looking at this uh, table, the data source, uh, maybe you can label it because like uh, people may get confused. Like, uh, okay. Uh, like whether these are data elements or indicators, because it all depends on how you configure your instance in general. So if it, if uh, your end users are mostly used to seeing, you know, like indicators more, they will always look at data elements, uh, indicator labels. So maybe you can just mention, um, these are all data elements. So you can just put a header and mention these are data elements so that they know. And uh, the other thing is like, um, uh, now, now this is an example where you have used data elements as opposed to indicators. So, uh, I, I mean, do you prefer this visualization of data element? Does it really uh, highlight uh, uh, the, the message that you want to con convey or the particular objective that you want to attain? Um, is, it, is a data element a better visualization or you would prefer to have an indicator instance? So like instead or like, what, what are your thoughts about that? Because I'm not saying which one, I mean, it is wrong or right, but uh, what do you think about it, group four? I think indicators are better for the data source than the elements. I think it would better describe, visualize what we want to what we want to to see. Yeah, the thing. Um, I mean, it really depends on what you want to. Uh, uh, show say for example uh, if comparison of numbers between regions or like or, or else if you just want to show it at national level just like here in training land you just want to show the numbers at national level then then it is perfectly fine but if your objective is for this to go for a comparison then you might have an issue uh, we were actually doing national and gender disaggregation 
yeah exactly so that's yeah, yeah. like this is fine because like you are just giving a national level figure of uh, each of the values uh, yeah. then my next question is like uh, would you have opted for a map over visual of of a, uh, over a chart or a chart is just fine for the particular objective that you want to cater for for the gender disaggregation which was our focus I think the, the chart, this column chart visualization, uh, we picked it, we decided it was better because it clearly shows the disaggregation of people on HIV, living with uh, HIV on ARTs in respect to, with respect to gender disaggregation. Like we can see the green and uh, we can see uh, people living with HIV tested positive. Uh, we can see that the, the females are more than the males. And then those retained on ART females are also more. And uh, we we can be able to clearly see that females, the, 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 the increasing rate in female positivity and the increasing adherence to female uh, as it relates to their drug and also initiation, drug initiation. So with respect to gender females, the values are high in all cases. Right. So. Because based on what you want to uh, convey to the end user, right? Like it's the gender disaggregation and the values at national level you try to uh, highlight, this may be a better visualization as opposed to a map uh, because then um, you may have trouble. I mean, like you are trying to convey multiple parameters here, right? But in maps, it's based, it's uh, usually when you just want to highlight one particular factor, map may be a better thing and, uh, and also want to make a comparison across the areas, uh, then maps are much suited. So for this one, yes, I agree with you. And then uh, uh, as the third action point, you mentioned uh, ELHIV, Nivon, ART, less than 50%. So this uh, less than 50% value, can you interpret from this chart? Um, because what I mostly see is uh, uh, the, the, I mean, the y-axis is data elements, right? The row values. So yeah. where the 50%. So, okay, the fifty percent was was something we actually just formulated to create a scenario. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we created we we created the fifty percent as a threshold. That, uh, for instance, if the if people living with HIV new on ART is less than fifty percent, then uh, we should check for adherence or initiation. Uh, that means that we having a high number of positivity. But then we have far less people that are being initiated on the drug and even far less that are adhering to the drug. So the 50% was something uh, we assume we formulated just to, to just to find, just to, 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 to make a conclusion. Right. So what I was actually saying is because uh, from this visualization, obtaining that 50% is not straightforward, right? Here we have uh, the y-axis is numbers and not the percentage. So, no, no, no. Yeah. It, it wasn't based on the numbers on the Y and the X axis. Like, for instance, now we have a female positivity test in 137,000 plus. So we are saying 50% of that number. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, what I was so actually it, trying to highlight is there is some calculation the end user will have to do, right? By looking at the visualization. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we never had a time to do no, no, that's okay. So this is something you can think about. Like, are we are we allowing the end users to you know like interpret it that way just by having a visual look at uh, the the chart, or may, maybe we can be a bit more specific. I mean, something for you to think about. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. Like, uh, shall we move to the group number five? Group five. Anybody from group five? Uh, Saurabh, we assigned people to group five, right? <laughs> Was there nobody? Yeah, the members were there, but then I tried asking the topic or the indicator, I did not get a response. So I assume they were, I mean, the members were too silent. <laughs> yeah. But we don't mind uh, if you can share the screen so that we can interpret.
we go. Yes, please. Okay, I guess uh, Tanupam shared the screen. Uh, are, you, are you preferring to stay silent or you can uh, unmute and present? You, you are currently muted, uh, Anupam. Uh, right, so anybody else from the group uh, mind presenting what you have? Yes. Yes, now we can hear, please. Hello, is my screen visible? Yes, it is visible. But it's not visible to me now, actually. Yeah. Is it visible? Yeah, for us, it's visible. I think. Uh... Yeah, okay, okay. So, I just you cater uh, for our RMNCHA. That is the skill delivery coverage for the last quarter. So, I prefer it to be presented as a map. So the objective is to measure the number of deliveries being attended by the skilled manpower. And uh, because uh, we want to, I mean, see the, uh, because the coverage is indicative of access of trained manpower to the pregnant mothers and higher the coverage by skilled manpower, the lower, lower will be the maternal and neonatal deaths. So that is why it is important to uh, measure this uh, indicator. And the sources will be the RMNCHA quarterly DHS2 data set and the numerator will be number of deliveries attended by skilled birth attendants. And denominator will be number of live births. And uh, related actions, uh, according to the, uh, the map, which is uh, the legend, so if the coverage is red, uh, less than uh, 40%, we'll review whether uh, the, I mean, uh, numerator, if there, if there is, a, I mean, a different errors are the entry errors are there, or we'll review denominator if there is a target population is correct, or is the target population, uh, are they uh, uh, correctly enrolled, or are the districts enrolled under the RMNCHA program? Maybe the uh, districts which are having less than 40% coverage, they are not enrolled in the RMNCHA program. And if the skill delivery coverage is green, the darker uh, portion, uh, it was the legend was showing more than 75%. So ne we need to sustain the efforts and we need to strengthen them further. If it is light green, light yellow, or dark yellow, uh, it means the coverage is less than still less than 75%. But uh, then we have to check whether there is under reporting or is skilled attendance available? Are there skilled attendants available in the area? Are traditional birth attendants uh, been trained in that area? And are people ready to get their deliveries from the newly trained birth attendants? Because many of the time people prefer deliveries from the traditional attendants only and they don't prefer the newly trained birth attendants. So we would look, like to look into these points. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, that's, that's really complete. Um, any comments from uh, others? Saurabh or Pramil, you want to comment? No, I think to me this, this looks uh, quite complete, yeah. Uh, From the visualization, yeah. uh, and I see the skill delivery coverage. Uh, so um, here is the um, only indicator skill delivery coverage. What is the other one? Indicator, but in, what are the parameters? Uh, I cannot understand it. So, you were breaking, I couldn't get it. I couldn't get Can, can you explain you could... what, what was he trying to complain? Uh, comment? Um, no, what are the others? Uh, what are hello? the other? Hello? Uh, I, 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 I couldn't get it actually. What are the other? What are what are the no, other? What are you saying? What were the other parameters? Skill delivery coverage and which are not, that means that are not skill delivery coverage, right? Or other? Uh, 
Yes. Okay. Actually, when we see deliveries, actually we see whether it is institutional or it is home based. So many of the time in home based deliveries, we look for skilled delivery coverages. And because in institution, we obviously are getting skilled manpower is there, but in home deliveries and sometimes sometimes in the rural areas, so people don't get get to go to the institutions for the delivery. So we would like to see what are the deliveries which are being uh, conducted by the skilled at birth attendants. So that is what we want to see in the area. Uh, in Hello. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh just uh, I, I have just two two comments. Uh, first thing is about the objective because uh, this is the food coverage, which is an indicator. So I was just wondering, like, uh, because you mentioned to measure the number of deliveries being attended by the uh, skilled manpower. Maybe I don't know whether you can revert to because we are not showing the number because we may have another visualization which where we only show the deliveries, the data element. So um, I'm not sure whether you can rename it so that it's not the numbers that you are seeing. So, so, so you want, you so you want me to write uh, the proportion of deliveries being attended by skin? No, no, no. Yeah, I'm just suggesting. Or the percentage? Uh, uh, or the percentage? Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe you can. I'm just mentioning few areas you can, you know, uh, modify if uh, if it is relevant. So maybe you can mention proportion rather than numbers because we may have another visualization where we are actually showing the data element value. That is one. And the other thing. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah. yeah. And also about uh, coverage, if it is uh, uh, less than 40, just like, I mean, some of the uh, uh, actions that you have suggested for this uh, third category, I mean, uh, between uh, 75 to 40, those may still be, available, right? So right now it's yes. about data, data related parameters, which are there. So you can also add this public health uh, related parameters also to that uh, section. So those yes, two yes. comments I had. Yes, yes. And that it's a very fine. complete uh, yeah, framework. I see that. Thank you. Thank you. Right, uh, shall we move on to the last group, uh, group six? Yes, please. I, I will be sharing my screen, just a minute. Please do, yes. Uh, is it visible now? Yes, it is visible. Okay, for our indicator, we selected MR1 coverage. Uh, so our objective um, of our, our, our visualization was to measure the overall performance of delivering the MR1 vaccine. Uh, here, we felt that the MR1 uh, vaccine coverage is uh, indicative of the utilization of immunization services by the community. And so um, a high coverage indicates high utilization, whereas a low coverage indicates that uh, there are a lot of ch dropout children and hence that there is a low utilization of health services by the population. So that's why it is important. Uh, for the data source, uh, it was the immunization program monthly DHIS2 data set. Uh, the numerator is the number of MR1 doses given uh, to children less than one year. And the denominator is the total population of uh, children less than one year of age, uh, because this uh, first dose is typically given at nine months of age. That is why uh, in both the numerator and denominator, we have the less than one year uh, present. Then for the related actions, uh, if MR1 coverage is uh, greater than 125%, then the actions would be uh, to review the numerator as well as to, re to review the denominator and cross-check the data. Uh, if MR1 coverage is green, that is greater than 90%, then uh, everything is great and uh, the directive would be to sustain the efforts. And now if MR1 coverage was less than 90%, then we would need to check for various aspects, uh, whether there is underreporting, whether uh, the community is aware of the importance of vaccination, uh, whether uh, any recent AFI has occurred in the community and hence uh, there is a resistance or reluctance in the community for vaccination. Uh, if there have been any uh, significant stock out of the vaccine, uh, thus leading to the low coverage, and then we would also have some programmatic actions uh, for the uh, immunization teams and the staff uh, in the respective districts facilities. Uh, it would be to identify all the dropout children uh, in their respective catchment areas and mobilize them for the next immunization session. And uh, where necessary, uh, they would be allowed to plan additional sessions uh, for selected areas in a campaign mode in order to improve the MR1 uh, coverage rapidly. That's all, thank you. Right. Thank you very much. And I especially like the actions part uh, where you have been really uh, going into details. Uh, so it's really good uh, group six. And 
obviously I know like all of you uh, in some of the groups who presented initially they didn't have uh, that much of time to prepare also so I'm just being fair by all the groups but uh, this is really nice the actions component uh, I have just one comment but before that uh, anybody else who want to comment It uh, looks like no comments from uh, participants. Yeah, because this is really complete, uh, nicely done. Uh, just uh, one comment I have, uh, maybe in the objective, uh, you can mention that you are trying to achieve uh, a cross-district comparison, maybe delivering MR1 vaccine across district, because uh, otherwise, the, uh, I, I mean, like, if, if we don't include uh, one um, query I have is like, why we select a map? So maybe... Hmm even selected uh, another type of visualization so one reason Definitely. map maybe so that we can show this geographic comparison because it's not the map is really valid here because you are just uh, only selecting one parameter which is one indicator so uh, what you're trying to do the map is the ideal but maybe you yes. can also mention, uh, you try to do a cross district uh, sure sure thank you i can i can modify the objective accordingly uh, to measure the overall performance of delivering MR vaccine and to compare the MR1 coverage across yeah. districts. Or is MR1 vaccine across districts, something like mm. that. We'll do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. No problem. Right. Any, any more comments from anyone? Right. Okay, then. So thank you very much, everyone. It was a, a really good uh, effort from all the all the groups. Uh, I mean, I was uh, initially thinking like we, were, we, we might not be able to do all these presentations given the short span of time we have. But like I, I suppose uh, today we had uh, really good collaboration between the peers, between part participants in your groups, as well as the uh, facilitators. So uh, I, I hope uh, it was a worthy effort. And I think we can conclude the uh, section on interpretations. Uh, so the plan from here onwards, of course, I have to uh, uh, tell the word of the day. But uh, other than that, uh, we, we have uh, one other section that is remaining for the day which is uh, implementation considerations, uh, which of course is a bit of a, I mean, um, sharing experience, which I can share the generic uh, rec recommendation where we can also go for a brief discussion about issues that you have and your experience. And also we have one uh, ungraded assignment, uh, uh, MCQ type assignment also for the interpretations. So what we can do now is like, we can take a short break and we can also give you some time to do the ungraded exercise. Or else we can have a maybe five, 10 minutes uh, short break and start the presentation on the implementation considerations, finish it off and give you time to uh, uh, do the uh, ungraded exercise later. Uh, anybody who, who, who opposed the latter idea, that is like anyone who, who, who's, uh, who, who doesn't like the idea of uh, uh, doing the ungraded assignment last after my next presentation, just let me know. If not, I will... Uh, 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 do the uh, presentation next on implementation considerations and we'll do the uh, ungraded assignment last. Please let me know if uh, anybody doesn't like that idea. All right, okay, yeah. Though I, I know like most of you like that idea, but if anyone doesn't like it, fine, right, okay. So I guess the majority likes the idea of doing uh, the implementation considerations so that you can do the uh, 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 the ungraded exercise uh, leisurely, but still, I think we need to take a small break. So what we will do is uh, we will meet in uh, exactly 10 minutes at uh, 3.35 uh, local time in India and Sri Lanka. We will meet again. And then at that time, I will uh, mention the word of the day. Right. Thank you.